office and they said to me, so I'll try to get through this stuff. Maybe I'll teach y'all a couple of things, but maybe not, so I hope you enjoy it. Mike Chuck Snow, I'm a Easter Regional Sales Manager for Microbelt and GeoQ. And I want to tell you about a project that uh, I helped the customer on. McGehee Engineering, we're based in Alabama. McGehee Engineering is based in Alabama. They're an old customer of mine. Um, traditionally, they've done photogrammetry only for probably seven or eight years. They've been very, very successful with that. But one of their customers, because they do a lot of mining and coal work, we're in Alabama, so go figure. They needed to do something where they were going to build a very long uh, conveyor belt and a large load belt, about, about two miles. It was a long way, but it would save the coal company a lot of money if they could do that because we got a lot of water running through Alabama, so they're gonna, they were going to do that project and they were asked to do it. Challenges we had was terrain, and you're going to see that more as we go along, but the terrain is very steep, a lot of heavy canopy, cliffs, as you can see right there, and they wanted all that done because they had to build all the things they needed, all the steel and everything to build this conveyor so they could get it into the barge easily. Water was there. It was a very large area, about 300 acres. This is kind of why I looked out. We did a little drone flight. This is kind of what we had. So if you, any of you guys are surveyors out there, conventional surveying, this will be very difficult and dangerous. So this, the way to do it was to do the light. I've been talking to this guy previous to this, but photogrammetry was a perfect solution. Everything we've been doing it had been open areas, right? Mining, you know, rock quarries, it's all open. You don't need LIDAR. But for this, there was no way that a uh, photogram tour is going to be a solution that would be viable and to work for them. So we talked about a system. Yeah, and we settled on this one. It's one of our TreeView 515. We sold hundreds of these. It's a great sensor. Um, 2,000 to 2,000 points to the ground per second. So it's a really good at canopy penetration. A little bit about it. It also is really good at doing lines. It does wire as well. This is like at a 70 or 80 meter fly height. If you do wires, I might do it 70 at five meters a second. And it works very well for that kind of stuff. A little bit about it, it's the HESI Pandar sensor, XT32, 32 beams, two returns. It's an 80 meter tool, but sometimes you may want to fly at 70. Because you guys know you're, you're usually this strong. One thing is very, very productive. But the other is, I don't want to go out there. I don't want to waste time going out there and you don't know what's out there. So you look at it, do the best you can. Maybe look at it, Google Earth. Maybe change your altitude and your speed, depending on how thick you think it is out there. But I have, and I've been doing this for 10 or 12 years. I have not seen anything this thing could bust through. And I have been to the jungles and stuff like that. But in the United States, I've been to a lot of difficult sites. Some where um, I was cut line, it was like a tunnel. And I said, I told the guy, I can't help you here, but I'm going to fly for you anyway, and it worked. So this tension does very, very well. Really accurate, three to five centimeters um, on this tool. If you do good survey technique. Here's our project, 277 acres. We flew a little bit more. Took us a little longer than normal, and you're going to see why as we go on to the presentation. Uh, four flights, seven hours out there on site. Um, 70 meters, five meters a second, and we had on the DJIM 300. This is the guys, this is us out on the site for the day doing the thing out there. Did it, DJI Flight Planner, created deliverables, processed in our software. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later because I think software is probably the most important thing when you're choosing a lot of sensor. We all integrate sensors. There's lots of guys that integrate the same sensors we do. I think we do a really good job at it, but software is like differentiates everything else. Our software is totally inclusive. It processes the pre deliverables and QA QCs the data right in our software. So we plan the mission, maybe shoot some checkpoints because you know we're human. We might make a mistake, want to measure up or something else, or a geo fly at for day day software. He grabs everything in the east to all be on Steve. He puts all the files, including the RGB files. We have cameras on there that we sell, sometimes one, sometimes two, sometimes three. And we can change those if you have a particular need that you want. There's something else on there for you. So we um, process it around trajectory. We run the bias, take noise out if you want to smooth it, those kind of things. And we run a lot of QC checks because you don't want to get to the end of the game and say, hey, my stuff's not good. In our QA, QC stuff with our software, it actually shows based on ASPRS standards, you can create this contour. It'll, it'll do it, um, a delta check on your X, Y, and Z. So before you do anything else, you can check that. Do I have a problem? Do I want to waste you know, a couple of hours? You know, it will not be accurate enough where I can sign my name to it. You can check those things before you spend all that time. And you can fix that problem usually in the software. So let's move on. 
Some of the things we do, as I mentioned, QAQC classification, we have auto extraction on rail line and transmission line, which is very helpful. Nobody will just sit there and hand digitize a bunch of transmission lines and problems that old towers. So that stuff will work inside of our software. Also, we have vegetation management inside of our software. So you can set it up to say, okay, I want to see everything within 20 feet, 10 feet, 30 feet, whatever, on the transmission line, and it'll do that for you automatically. And that's very helpful. Um, we did um, over 600 miles in Brazil, and people really like that. Nobody wants to look through 600 miles and drag that data because they're in fact measure with your cursor. You don't want to do that. You want the software to do that automatically for you and turn it red so you know where you have to go to do things so you won't have an outage there. So this is why it took us all day. We're on that little area over there. We found a cabin where the people would give us access. We had to fly all the way to here. That's 3,300 feet just right there. Over here's a little bit farther. And, you know, we got a sensor on there and a drone. And we don't want to lose it, right? So we did not even think about going critical battery. And we were back on the ground at 30%. So instead of being two flights, you know, we did it in four. Just to be super safe. I'm just a super safe guy anyway, but I'm, a, I'm a, actually a real pilot. But And I'm still alive, so y'all know I must be pretty safe. <laughs> anyway. Um, we flew it, got it all done at that time. Why well, use LIDAR, guys? Accuracy is one of them. And if you're a surveyor, I don't mean this bad, but um, if you're out there in, in this project right here and you go 50 feet between dot to dot on your GPS, I'm going to tell you what level between that. If you did that, it's not going to be right. We got a shot at three inches. Um, so when we create a surface out there, you'll get to see that it's pretty, it's, it's pretty dramatic what it was like out there. Um, our data might be a little accurate. You might shoot shots that are better than ours, you may not. But I've done this a lot. I've, I've trained over 500 people. I've done over a thousand flights myself. So I've done a lot of checking on data. So I'd say that ours is, our data might be pretty good. Speed is a big deal. Um, y'all know if y'all are working in this environment, for the last five, six, seven years, and you've tried to hire somebody to go out in the woods, it's difficult. You know, I want to do it, it's hard to. Um, Safety's a problem. So the drone will go out there and knock it out for you really quick. We, we roughly calculate that the drone is about 60 times faster than humans. And I'm not talking about you and one guy. I'm talking about five guys or 10 guys. We did 1,800 acres in three days in Texas through one of our systems. Very, very quick and, and accurate. We checked it all. You know, you have to do that. Dang, just write your naval stuff. The safety, it was very difficult terrain, snakes, bees, wasps, just falling down. Those kind of things happen to you when you're out there. It's just part of surveying. And we, we get away with all that stuff. And you'll see the stuff later. You got a new revenue stream. I could sit here the rest of the day and tell you about customers that I have. Because I, like I said, I've been doing this a long time. Um, that have generated new revenue streams out of having one of these systems. Some of them, and I'm just told, doesn't matter who it is. I talked to him in the last two weeks. I've got a guy that built, there's a large engineering firm though, very large. They build a million a month, drone data. A million a month. I got another small guy. They did a million for the year just in drone survey because this is so fast. This would allow you to get out there and get stuff done very difficult, you know, very quickly. And you can have your survey uh, your survey crew doing things that the drone can't do. There's stuff it can't do, obviously. It can't do inverts, building corners, other things like that. Your survey crew can do boundaries or other things. Let the drone do the stuff that's good for the drone, right? And the drone never wants a truck or a 401k or any health insurance. He just sees good sit in the box. Just pull him out when you need him. This is what the, um, the software produces. That's a point cloud based on elevation right there. We have other ways to look at the data. We have many, many ways to look at your data in our, inside of our software. You choose what you like. I Me, mean, I like to clean mine up. I like the titty because the tin shows me where I have a problem. And I can um, zoom in that, run a line across it 20 feet wide, run across the project. And I say, oh, that red space should be sticking up there. Oh, that's dots. I can click below those dots, hit the space while they're going. re i I'm doing. So usually for me, for doing this for a bunch of years, 10 or 15 minutes, I don't care how big it is, 10 or 15 minutes, and I'm done with the stuff that doesn't get all or classify the ground. So there's true color. We always do true color. People like to see it in true color. And if you're doing any kind of line work, it's difficult sometimes with that intensity file to see line work. But you can show it true color. Do edge of pavement, backup curve, those kind of things as well inside the software. So you can do that if you want to. This is kind of what it looked like out there, guys. And that, and that get over there, it gets down by the water where it's very, very steep. You'll see that in a minute. So I got a surface for you in here too. So 
that's that's ground when you ground class we turn it orange turn all the other stuff gray and that's stripped out we never delete points when i say it said it while ago it's really just stuck in a file somewhere and you can select or make a new class if you want to you got buildings you got something else. all that stuff's in art but you may have something just for you if you want to this is what's in there you just you know pop them out and it goes into the file that you created there's the surface now does anybody want to go out there and do that i mean you know I don't think you're going to be wanting to do any of this kind of survey. And could you do it accurately? When you're trying to build something that's going to run for a couple of miles, and you've got to have all the pieces that's got to fit right, are you going to go over there, go over here? I don't know. I don't know. You know I, didn't, I didn't sing the file on this when the engineering company designed this for the coal company. I don't know if this is better, or was that, or was that run too fast out the uh, for large? I don't know, or is that better? But as you can see, if you try to do that conventionally, it would take a long time. They estimated that, you know, two or three months with their crew to do this, so... Okay, anyway, that's it. And this is our deliverables. We did a digital elevation model. We did contours and created all the mosaic for the customer they give to us. They could use it to design everything they needed for the conveyor and for the barge loadout for the cold stuff. So, any questions about anything, whether it's related to this or not, if it's about LIDAR stuff, I'll try to answer them. I'm smart enough, I'll try to help you guys. You got any? You money? What you got? The way he asked, uh, how does it see through vegetation? 200,000 pulses of a small, narrow LIDAR beam. I still, I, I, and I own the mapping company too. So I've seen LIDAR for a long time. I still call it magic, I'm sorry, but just because of what you ask. I don't know how it does it, man. I, it, 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 here's what I tell people. If sunlight could hit the ground, 200,000 pulses a second, we're gonna hit the ground flying in five meters a second. And just, there's so many of them. It's, it's not, I'm not gonna tell you it's gonna be everywhere. There's gonna be places, I see where, okay, I've got a five foot hole there, 10 foot hole there, but. You know, I don't have a 50, I'm not going 50 feet to play shots. Normally, it gets shots everywhere. It just does. The sensor works very, very well, especially some of the new technology that we have now. Um, what makes a good LiDAR sensor is pulses per second, returns, um, and how narrow is the beam? What's your beam divergence? So we have a couple of new sensors over there now. The 515, we sold hundreds of them, but it works wonderful. But the new 535, same manufacturer, the beam divergence is less and it's more powerful and it's lighter. So we really, really, really get some good penetration canopy. But I, like I said, I've never seen anything. I've never been on any job, not been doing it a long time, but the 515 wouldn't work for us. Anybody else? Any other questions? We're in booth 609, come see us. But anybody else got anything? I'd be glad to discuss it with you. We'll to, to talk to you all day. And it's smarter. We got smart people over there, not just me. So software guys there. We got nine software writers. I talked to you guys about the software. If you look at it, it's the most important thing. And ours is from start to finish. We got all the deliverables inside of our software. You never have to move out of it. So, and we have free training at our facility every month. We have free training online, two, eight hour days every month, whether you own our stuff or not. We don't ask you if you already just sign up, but you can do it. Come, we'll feed you lunch if you want to do that. It's in Huntsville, Alabama. Or if you want to go online, do it. We have hundreds of videos that are time stamped. If you don't have any break lines, you don't have to watch two hours and 47 minutes of a video. You can say break lines, put it in our thing and find it and watch a seven minute video and figure out how to do that. So, and there's hundreds of videos there for that. So, you can all that kind of stuff as well. So I think our software is the best in the business. It's been out since 2006. We've got nine guys there and that's all they do is write software for us. So hey, we will add something. If you have something that said, Chuck, this is not your software. We added two things last year, but enough people asked us We'll stick it in there for you guys if y'all need it. So that kind of stuff as well. So thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate it.